Which one of my fantasy-inspired cookbooks should I even use? Ah, fortunately, I have a sous chef to help assist in the choosing. Yeah, man, I'm talking about you. Help me out. Of course you headbutt the one with a fish on the cover. We get it, you're a cat, you like fish. But sometimes you just gotta channel your inner Sophie, tie your tiny braid with a bow, and initiate Operation Howl's Moving Cupcakes. Sorry, sorry, Calcifer's Cupcakes. Anybody for some bacon? Nom, 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 nom. Yes, please, no. Let's start out by saying this isn't so much a making and baking video so much as it is a making and decorating video. So if you've made cupcakes from the back of a box, that's what I did. Now we're going to talk about how to make some marshmallow frosting. Mmm, mmm, sweet! This recipe called for one cup powdered sugar, seven ounces of marshmallow cream, which it said, half cup of, no, 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 room temperature butter, and one teaspoon vanilla extract. Step one was to mix the butter and powdered sugar together until fully blended. Don't forget to do this thing where you use your magic wand to scrape the sides of the mixing bowl. This part of the video has been sped up with magic to save time. Next up, we hand mix in the marshmallow cream and vanilla. This can take a while and give you quite an arm workout to get rid of all those pesky lumps of butter. So be sure to thank your ancestors for mixing everything by hand. I also decided to add some cocoa powder to some of the frosting to give it a darker brown color and a chocolatey delicious taste. Since Calcifer is a fire demon, I wanted to use these black and brown sprinkles on the base of the cupcake to kind of represent the fireplace. So I rolled the cupcakes in them and with the larger ones, I left a hole in the middle because I knew there was going to be some fire calcifer there. Do you need a fancy piping set to ice these cupcakes? No, no, you don't. You can just use a Ziploc bag with a hole cut in it to make it look like a circle. Then I added in the yellow and the orange colored frosting and tried to squeeze some food coloring down the sides of the bag to make it look more fiery. Look kind of like this. I think the fiery effect looked nicer on the mini cupcakes. And here's an example of me struggling with it. After all the frosting decorating was done, I wanted to add a little more fantastical flair. So I tried to make some spun sugar decorations for the top also. To make the spun sugar decorations, all you need is sugar and a frying pan. I used about two cups of sugar to coat the pan evenly and then off to the side I had a tin foiled pan coated with a light coat of olive oil. With the burner set on medium I then just had to make sure to keep moving that sugar around. All you need to do is have patience and keep moving the sugar around so that it's evenly distributed across the pan. It took about 10 minutes with a close eye until the sugar was melted to a point just before burning and then I did burn it. But it still worked for this demonstration. Tips include try not to film at the same time as the first time you make sugar on a frying pan. As you can see it starts to kind of clump up together and you can see the beginnings of the sugar melting at the bottom. Now here it's starting to get that kind of nice light caramel color that you would want for good sugar decorations, spun or caramelized. Throughout stirring the sugar, you wanna kind of periodically try to lift up some of the liquid to see what its consistency is like. This is a little too runny here still, but I am lifting my wooden scraper out to kind of see what the consistency is like to see if it'll be good to make some spun sugar decorations. It's still looking a little too thin, but you can see by the steam kind of rising and the bubbling that this is where it's kind of starting to burn and I should have maybe turned the stove top down. Ah! But it, the consistency is getting there. 
This is bad for your stove. Do not recommend. So now I've removed the pan from the heat to try to drizzle the melted sugar gently on my oiled pan to see if I can make some fun shapes. Oop, and it's a little too hot and thin still. When it starts to get a little colder, it'll be more of this kind of thick caramely consistency. So if it doesn't um, gloop off the spoon easily, then you need to just heat it up again on the stove. So here's the consistency you're kind of looking for to make some sort of stable sugar decor for the top of your cupcakes. I'm trying to make kind of shooting star looking things or stars. So this is kind of what I ended up with on my tit foil. They do look pretty dark because I did burn the sugar. I also wanted to make some kind of sugar. fun sugar that looks like this for a fun effect. And I did that by basically whipping my spoon back and forth like this between two tin foiled and oiled cake pans. And then you can even pick it up and shape it a little bit to kind of make it look like flames or sparks, which was what I was going for. Then to remove your spun sugar decorations, you just want to very gently start at a corner and peel off the decoration, like so. You can then pretty easily attach it to your cupcake by just sticking it into the frosting. Aw, a beauty spot. This guy already has a mouth. Here are some of the mini cupcakes with their piped on eyes and mouths. What do you think, Calcifer? Do they look like you? Yes, give them to me! Yum, 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 yum. Next, I just took my spun sugar decorations and added them to the frosting of the cows for cupcakes in ways I thought looked kind of cool. And what do you think, oh great and powerful fire demon? Who wore it better? And of course, gotta get Briscoe's opinion. He loves to smell everything. But be careful, sponge sugar can be pointy. Ah. After you've eaten all the delicious fire demons you can, there's only one thing left, and that's clean. <laughs> 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 